Hey folks, it is Ask a Flower Farmer Wednesday. It's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler and um, hey everybody. I um, don't know how the weather is where you are, but we are wet and kind of cold. Um, it's kind of a perfect day for chili and coffee and all those kinds of things. So I'm here at the Fulfillment Center and um, you know, I have a whole lot I could say to you guys. But before we start jabbering, remember, if you want me to answer your question, I'll do my best. You just need to post it down in the little circle with the question mark in it, um, because that way I don't miss your question while I'm scrolling through all of um, your names. So questions about flower farming, growing cut flowers, business, farm dogs, bring it on. Um, so before we get started, I just want to, you know, this week, well, actually last week, Bobo and I started gathering our fall leaves to do our pathways in the cool flower garden. And um, that just brought a few things to mind. First off, I just forgot how allergy related I am to those leaves. Um, I mean, I get so congested when I'm working with them. Even um, we've even put on masks at one point in time to help with that. But they are so worth their weight in gold. So probably about 60% of the garden has its leaves down in the pathways. Um, the rest of them will get put down tomorrow and then we're whole weeding. Our cool flower garden looks awesome, but I will tell you the cool season weeds are also looking pretty awesome. <laughs> so you need to be sure you know that all of those chickweed and henbit, those are all they're just like cool flowers, y'all. They're cool season, hardy annuals, and they are thriving in this condition. So all of that chickweed that will just be all over your garden in spring is out there right now getting its start, and that's when hoeing. Um, I spent, let's see, today is Wednesday, so Monday I hoed um, a couple of our direct seeded beds, and it's just so easy, y'all, when the weeds are small and you save yourself hours and hours of weeding time by using the stand-up garden hoe. Um, you can go to thegardenersworkshop.com and just put hoe in the product search. And on that product page are some videos showing me doing it. Um, so check it out. I couldn't live without that garden hoe. I mean, I don't use many tools. That's why we don't sell so many tools. The garden hoe, if I was on stranded on an island, is definitely um, the tool I'd have to have. And the other tool that we used the heck out of busting those bags of leaves, I don't know if any of you guys have, this is called, this is actually a sod knife. The same Japanese company that makes the shears and the hand hoe that we love so much makes this little booger. And let me tell you, you can cut anything with this. Um, so I was using it last week and this week. I actually have about five of these. They're on every tractor we own. They're in baskets laying everywhere. Some of them are even rusty from being left outside and they still work great. They have this serrated edge so they just keep cutting, but for ripping those bags of leaves open, I mean, to just split them and dump them was priceless. I use this um, also to cut, you know, we used, we used to use a lot of straw on our farm. We don't anymore because of contamination issues, but those bale strings that bale the straw, hold the straw together, no matter how much you try to gather them all up, they always get some get left in the garden. Well, they get wrapped around the tiller. This is the tool. So we use this for cutting plants out of the ground. I harvest greens with it. It's 10 bucks, friends. So I'm just giving this is the greatest stocking stuffer for anybody that does any kind of work outside, whether they're a gardener or just a lawn guy, whatever. Um, you'll find them on our website, and they're, I believe they're $9.95 or something. It is like the best gift ever. So I'm going to look. We got some questions down here, but I also see that several of our students are on here. If you see all the little sunflower emojis, if you have taken any of our online courses, we love it when you put your you comment with the sunflower emoji. That IDs you as one of our students, and I see I have one of our um, current students so enjoying taking your flower farming course 
Sad it's coming to an end. Best investment ever. Well, let me just tell you this. Your course never really comes to an end. So, yes, the part of you exploring the content, but I have very few people are able to take in all the content during the actual school time. So there's plenty more for you to, to take in. But here's the thing, um, Thistle Tweed, Thistle Farm, um, is that, about a month after the class ends, you get invited to join my alumni Facebook group. And in that group, I'm popping in there doing live Facebook things. Um, I just did one showing the cool flower garden this last week and the leaves and the state of all my plants and what I was going to be doing about pension or whether I was pensioning them or not. So we're still going to be together. Once you become my student, you're mine forever, people. That's what I'm here to tell you. Um, so I am um, excited about our course coming to an end to get to the next part of where our course goes. All right, so, but the, I'm glad you are enjoying it. And remember, if you're one of our students, please just comment with um, the emoji. Oh, and Colleen is saying that is an amazing tool. Um, and it's just, you can use it for so many things. I mean, literally, like hostas and those kinds of plants that you like to divide them, I literally cut the center out of the plant instead of lifting the whole plant up, and it does the same thing. It's like the bomb. It's the best thing ever. All right, friends. So the other thing I want to ask you before I start um, answering um, questions is please, I haven't done a very good job of this for my Ask a Flower Farmer, please share about this event. I don't know, it's not like Facebook where you can share an event, but if you just post about it, um, to mention it to your flower farm and friends that, you know, to join us here on Wednesdays at 1130 Eastern Time to bring their questions. Um, so we'd love to get some um, folks that don't know about us here yet. So, when is your sister going to do a, an on-demand bouquet making class? I'll tell her you said that. And in fact, maybe this coming season, because we won't be consumed, because, you know, we're not selling. Last year was our, or this year, was our farewell season of selling our flowers. We're still growing a huge garden. Um, we can definitely do that. So you should ding her on um, Facebook and ask her that. All right. So, what is the course called? I need to be your student. I'm starting my flower farm in, at next year at my new home. So, um, Marie, the course, if all of our courses are over on thegardenersworkshop.com, and um, our big school courses, one of which is mine, we have five big school courses. Mine is um, Flower Farm and School Online, The Basics. Enrollment does not open again until next October, um, but you need to go there and sign up to get on my wait list, and that way we'll keep you in the loop, and we send you great resources while you're waiting, and we'd love to have you um, join us there. When do you plant status? Status is actually um, a cool flower. It wasn't included in the book because we were just experimenting with it. Um, we have found it to be winter hardy to zone 7B. Um, anybody in 7A and 6, I would recommend that you definitely row cover it while you're experimenting. Maybe do a little bit outside, I mean out without row cover and some with. Um, but the abundance of production and the quality of the stems is unsurpassable by spring planted status. Um, we got 30 to 36 inch stems and they just would not stop y'all. I mean, we just cut and cut and cut. Um, so cool flowers is, I mean, status is a cool flower. Um, so add it to your list. And if there are other cool flowers, if you want to um, see what those might be. If you go to our store, thegardenersworkshop.com, go to the go to shop, then go to seeds, and under seeds there is a cool season category. In there, any seed that's there that's not in my book are those that we've added since then. Um, and if you're one of my students, you know that you have special access to even a new resource 
Um, they're my beta group. I'm not going to tell you what it is um, that we're working on creating a really awesome resource for that. That'll it'll probably be another year before the public sees it um, or is, has access to purchase it. Um, but my students are currently working on it. So, um, but until then, just go to our category and check out what seeds are in there. And those are the same ones that we um, we grow. Autumn Fresh Cut Flowers is asking, do you pinch snapdragons? Yes. Um, my method of pinching for almost all of my annuals that are can be pinched is I always pinch 50% of the crop. There's benefits both ways, and I want both benefits. So there are definitely benefits to actually pinching. I know you said you don't have specific bouquet recipes, but do you count stems or just eyeballs? So we do we like it's the perception size so it depends on for different markets we have different like farmers market had a size our bouquet subscription had a size and our supermarket had a size um, basic based on whatever their price point was and so our farmers market fifteen dollar bouquets um, were I guess you would have called that a soccer ball size um, so when you look down at the head of it, and I can't even remember. Have you? I'm not sure if you've seen the bouquet making um, video yet in the course, but we show you how we lay them out, and it is so important that you don't make an arrangement bouquet. You make a bouquet that most of the flowers are on the top plateau so that when somebody picks up and looks at it, you get the maximum size and they get to see everything. Um, so we go by that. Um, our bouquet subscriptions are bigger than that. Um, and so it just, that's how we kind of do it. So I would say to you that our market bouquets, let's just say a $15, actually it's $20 bouquet now, market bouquet used to have 12 to 15 stems. And what the variable is, is the size of the flowers. If you have big honking coxcomb or bigger sunflowers or bigger zinnias, there's fewer stems. So we go by the perceived value of what it looks like. Tips for hardening off early spring planted hardy annuals, new to cool flowers, zone 6A. So if you're doing very early spring plantings, um, <clears throat> you can, um, to harden them off, so you're bringing them from indoors or from out of a greenhouse to outdoors. Um, you can do that if it's still pretty cold where you are. First off, cool flowers are take cold really, really well. That's the whole point, right? But if you want to, um, if you're worried if the daytime temperatures are still just really frigid, you can actually cover the, put your plants outside and cover them with a row cover um, and only leave them out for a few hours at the heat, the hottest point of the day. We literally take them straight from the grow room out onto the carport. Um, and unless it's below 30 degrees, we just, they take it, you know. Um, so don't be afraid. If it's above 30, they really don't need any protection during that hardening off. Um, so just be really um, diligent about giving them some protection. The wind is what is more um, harmful at that point in time. And I would definitely plan on hooping and covering them when you planted them out. And that also extends the hardening off time. When you get them out in the garden and hoop and row cover them, that provides a really great environment. So A. Smith says, I just signed a lease on a property. What's your recommendation recommendations for planting cool flowers since I missed fall planting? I feel so behind. You're in 7B. First, I want to just say, Folks, nobody is behind because whenever you get to either start seeds or plant something, there's something that can be planted at that time, typically. So stop thinking that you are behind so you're not. You just haven't gotten started yet um, because that is a boulder that we put on our own shoulder that is not necessary. So what I'm saying is... Um, if I am planting in summer and people, I hear this all spring, I'm so behind. It's like, you're not behind. You just haven't planted your first planting yet. It's a mental game, y'all. We are our own worst enemy. And it's all about how you think about things. So, 
Um, with that said, so that means that you're going to be doing a very early spring planting, which means that you have to have transplants ready to go into the ground six to eight weeks before your last historical spring frost. And so that means you're going to be doing some seed starting in January. So you need to be sure you already have your seeds, that your ground, the biggest challenge you're going to face is getting the area prepared. That's the problem. Very early spring plantings, we prepare in fall. So if you have not done that, you, that's gonna be your really big challenge. So I get out there, the first dry spell you have, get your beds plant, um, prepared, covered, whether you're using Bio 360 or mulch or whatever you use, and get them ready and waiting and get busy starting your seeds in January to have your transplants ready for six to eight weeks before your last spring frost. And if you don't, let's just say you don't ever um, get dry enough weather, then you may have to skip. You will damage your soil so much by trying to work wet soil, you'd be better off to skip and just wait to do your first spring planting of um, tender annuals. So you'll have to let us know how that goes. Hey, Wanda, do you or any of my flower friends know of a company that sells plugs in smaller quantities? I don't have room to plant 125 um, to 200. No, you know, Wanda, I do not because Anybody, I mean, Farmer Bailey pretty much is the only one that I know that sells in smaller quantities. There are 72s, but not every, um, you would, I mean, Dave Dowling would be the go-to to ask that um, at Ball, Hort, to just see, are there any growers that grow in 72s? Um, and, but that would be the ultimate smallest. And frankly, I don't think there's enough money in it for them to, to actually grow that. You know what I mean? For the number of plants. But there might be. It seems to me that I bought 72s 100 years ago um, for something. I can't remember what. That was back before I was growing bigger. Um, but I would definitely ask Dave. I do not. I am not aware of any. Are there greenery or grass types that you can plant as cool plants in early spring. So you're asking if there's any cool season hardy annual grasses. Not that I know of. There are a bunch of perennial grasses that I've never grown because I don't grow a lot of perennials. And by the way, um, I have a great podcast coming out on Saturday morning. It's all about why I grow annuals. And um, so it's really a great one. I recorded it um, earlier this week and it talks about annuals versus perennials. But anyway, I do not know of any off the top of my head, I'm sorry to say. Can't attend, couldn't attend on Farm Day 2020, 20, 2021. Do you have dates set for 2022? I'm putting it on my calendar. Well, we have not, I mean, you know, with this whole pandemic business, um, time will tell. But if we were to have one, and I'm feeling fairly certain that we may not be having one in 2022 just because my we're having a big construction project started at our home but we'll see but if we do and i'm not saying we are it's usually the last saturday in june so you know put a big old question mark there and if you're not already on my newsletter farm news list you need to get on it because that's where we will um, announce it first and um, I don't know if we would limit the number of people coming or what we'll do but you need to be on go to the gardenersworkshop.com and the option right there on the home page there's a newsletter sign up option somewhere on there um, that you can get on our farm news Connie asks, is there a formula to figure out how many transplants I will need to plan out by plant spacing and bed size? Um, there's not a formula, but you can make for your own. I mean, that is one of the things that a lot of people, it's like for us, I mean, we have it written on the wall, literally at the farm, um, but it's like our beds are 30 inches wide, our most classic spacing is four rows, six inches apart, so you literally um, just do the math to figure out how many plants fit in a bed 
your length for that spacing. Um, so you can actually do that and just keep that. You know, I talk about everybody should have a seed starting notebook where each seed that you start has a page. You're not writing tons of stuff in there, but just pertinent stuff. And maybe the front of that notebook would have, you know, for every, and so it depends on what size grower you are. When we were a big grower, we had 120 foot beds. Each bed was like one type of flower. We knew how many transplants it took for one bed. And we always say start a third more seeds than plants that you need because stuff happens. Not every transplant is a grade A transplant. Um, and that would be information that I would actually add to that little notebook, right? Let's see. Oh, Ashley posted her, her little sunflowers. Good for you, Ashley. All right, so we love seeing our students on here. First time early spring planting at the UPIC. What's my window to get all the seedlings in my Zone 7 North Carolina garden? So, Ashley, I don't know if you've read my book, Cool Flowers, but it talks in there all about the timing. It's You should be planting transplants six to eight weeks before your last spring frost, and that means you need to start the transplants much earlier. Um, and, yeah, so in, it doesn't really matter about, it's not about your zone, it's about, um, your frost dates as to when you actually do your planting. So your frost dates are really what you want to figure out and then start counting back on a calendar. So Irish 554, can I cut down my old camellias to the ground? I have no idea. Um, I, I'm guessing you don't want to kill them. You're trying to get them to regrow. I would de first you need to know what kind of camellia you have. And then I would actually enter that into a search engine um, the type of camellia, how to prune it, or what to do. I can't imagine cutting it to the ground is the best, but you can do a hard pruning um, at some point in time. But I, first, you got to figure out what your um, what kind. There's a lot of different kind of camellias, um, so I would figure that out. So that's all the questions we have on there. So I will scroll back through your names. Um, so again, anybody, if you guys want to share about what we're doing here on Wednesdays at 11.30, please spread the word. Hello, Yorktown. I'm just looking through here. So we have a lot of good friends on here, a lot of familiar names. Hello, Kansas. Oh, you know what? The Hori Hori. Do we even have Hori Horis anymore? Yeah, that was one of those tools that we just had trouble getting, so they've actually been discontinued. So be glad you got one, Blue River. Um, so I, I was talking earlier, hello, Michigan. I was talking earlier about my favorite little tool, um, and it's this sod knife which i can use for so many different things and you know the other thing that i was really appreciating the other day when we were out in the garden when i was doing my um live facebook live with my alumni group when we were doing a um look at my cool flower garden and what i was going to pinch i was totally loving you know we have these great extra this is we have one size bigger than this if it had not been for these sticks out in my cool flower garden, because we're growing so many new colors of different seeds that we sell, um, I would have never known what I was looking at. And so the, what the really fun thing, the way that we make the most out of these plant markers is the first year I use them, we write on one side, write the plant name, and we use the garden marker. The garden marker on this wood lasts for over a couple of seasons. It definitely works. However, if you use the plant marker for one specific plant this year, but next year you don't need it, that plant marker, then we will typically just line through it and use the other side, right? So that's two years use. But here's what we do even beyond that. After we've written on both sides using our garden marker, we then will dip the top half of this plant marker into some paint or either just paint it. And then we do really fun things. If y'all ever heard of puffy paint, you know what that is. Puffy paint is um, something you get at like the craft store and people used to use it for like sweatshirt art and stuff. It's kind of lumpy. 
puffy paint holds up outside in the garden awesome and you can and it makes um, a lump it makes a raised word um, so you can really use puffy paint on these even after you use the garden markers and you know what else we've used puffy paint for in the garden um, we I have actually used puffy paint to write on rock, big rocks out in my garden, you know, back when I used, and in my domestic home garden, you know, back when I used to do a lot of that, it lasts for years. I have puffy painted rocks that are as visible and colorful today as they were 20 years ago when I wrote on them. Um, so, Freckled Violet is saying, by the way, I love my purple gloves. I worked them hard this weekend. You know, I used to be one of those people that um, didn't wear gloves. Our gloves fit like a second skin. Y'all, they're like seven or eight bucks. Best ever. Find them. If they hand, you can hand wash them or wash them in the machine. They last more than a season as a flower farmer. Check it out. All right, I got some questions. Yes, I've got the book. Taking the course. I know my frost dates, but I've got so many seedlings to transplant and not many hands. So wondering, do I have any wiggle room? to start earlier and go later. So that's a great question, Ashley. Um, so first off, that's your first sign of needing to get help. If you can't get jobs done timely, I totally understand what you're talking about. Um, and I would say, yes, I would start, I would definitely lean to start earlier than later um, and just hoop and rope, hoop them and row cover them. And you should be fine um, getting a head start on planting your very early spring, cool season, hardy annuals, for sure. Do you fall plant soapwort? Yes, yeah, soapwort is saponaria. That is the best kept secret in cool flowers. Um, that's another new one that we've added. I didn't even know about saponaria until two years ago when Jonathan and Megan Lease of Springforth, um, they did our no-till microscale course. They're the one, the instructors. Um, we fall planted it and I was just doing, I just did a podcast with them. And before we started recording, he told me that his sapping area, their sapping area just went through 18 degrees without any row cover. Um, so there you go. So it's definitely a cool flower and they are in zone 7B and they, um, grow it in the fall, plant it in the fall. I'm having a hard time getting Bupleurum to sprout. Any tried or true tips? Sure. Um, I have become a Bupleurum superstar. Um, Bupleurum actually needs um, darkness to sprout, so you cover it out in the garden. When you sow the seed in the garden, you cover the soil, the seed with a little bit of soil. Um, that's another job that I use our stand-up garden home for, but here's the thing about Bupleurum. It is slow. Um, so I don't even start looking for sprouts until about 10 to 14 days after I've planted it. Be sure you're watering the direct seed. And it's really important for the way that I direct seed is down into a little trough. Um, if you're not one of my students, we have a really on-demand, short, down and dirty seed starting course. It's like 20 bucks or 24 bucks or something. Um, and I take you through how I direct seed. Direct seeding in that way makes it really obvious where you put the seeds. Um, and then Bupleurum really needs it cool to sprout. So you plant it in that trough, you cover it with a little bit of soil, you be sure it gets water in 10 to 14 days, you get little sprouts, but the sprouts are really hard to see because they tend to be maroonish. Um, and we, of course, over sow. I do not thin Bupleurum. Um, and it is, we have a bumper crop every year. Um, so try that. I don't know if you've tried that. I don't know if maybe you're trying to start it inside. If you're trying to start it inside, I can promise you it is probably um, too warm. They really like it cool. Why did you decide to not sell flowers? What would you do with the flowers? So um, so I don't know if you followed us very long, Luann. I mean, I've been a commercial flower farmer for 24 years, and our business has really grown more into education and selling the stuff that we do it all with. Um, so we have continued to sell to our commercial customers, then we phase them out. We continue with our retail customers until this year. Um, and so we do a lot of things with our flowers. Our flowers are a big part of our educational courses, our resources, um, our online store, because we have tons of resources free and paid. Um, and we have lots of programs that we take do things with our flowers. So, um, But we just are not 
obligated any longer to our on-farm um, members only market. We had a couple hundred people that we were obligated to every week. Now we have much more time to do a lot more education, basically. And our we've downsized our grow our cutting garden down to an eighth of an acre, which is 5,500 square feet, which will really produce a gob of flowers. Um, so y'all hear more about what we'll be doing with our flowers, um, some fun stuff. So that's kind of why we did that. All right, I've got one last question here. Expecting three to five inches of snow, do I pull back the row cover so the fabric doesn't freeze to the plants? Yes, you always take row cover down when snow is coming. Um, snow is a better insulator than row cover ever thought about being, and snow conforms to your plants, but if you leave that row cover on, it just crushes, and you will have a mushy mess underneath there. So you always take row covers down. Um, I'm cold, y'all. Um, you always take row covers down when snow is coming. Even the forecast of snow, if you're not sure, um, and we just just always take it down if you're in doubt. So friends, remember every Wednesday right here on Ask a Flower Farmer. And remember, I'm also over on Clubhouse at one o'clock on Wednesdays. And today I'm talk last week we talked about over there the importance of us resting, how that builds your business more than anything else, how important it is. Today I'm talking about stuff about garden rests and having native borders and um, that'll really be fun. And if you want to join me over there, all you have to do is download the phone app. It's for iPhones and Androids. Download the app, join Clubhouse, and then seek out my club. It's the Flower Farming Club. And I think I might have put a link to it in my profile here on Instagram. I have to remember to do that if I didn't. Um, and that starts at 1 o'clock. You can ask me questions over there, but you can actually come up on the stage and we can hear each other and talk like we're on a telephone. So I would love to have you join me over there at 1. And friends, until we meet again, spread the word. Meet us here at 1130 on Wednesdays. Ciao.